Well, I don't know if it's rebuilding, Jim. You know, it's something that we laid a foundation last year with a lot of really good guys. And so I hope it's not rebuilding. I hope that foundation was laid. And now as new pieces get into it, uh, it's going to look differently for a while. Um, there's a lot of youth and a lot of inexperience, but I hope week to week they always can go back to that foundation and knowing how we want to play, uh, the personality that we want to have obviously has to be created. The identity that we're, this team's going to have is going to be an ongoing process here for for a while, you know, until we get into game play uh, and really can figure some things out that way. Uh, I think things will change. But the foundation was laid last year by last year's team, and now it's just building upon that. And new pieces get in the mix, and you build on it. And I, I really like where we went from our exhibition game to a scrimmage. I, I just I thought there was a lot of growth in that week, and we're going to need growth this week as we get ready for a very difficult stretch. Will the style change? I hope not. You know, we want to play. You know, we want to play up tempo. We want to play as fast as we can without getting in a hurry to where um, we hurry things up to where we don't take care of the ball and we don't take care of each possession of what kind of shot we get. I think we've got guys that can shoot the basketball, guys that can score the basketball in and out. Um, but it's that's the way offense always is. It's it's about a valuing the possession to where you're not turning the ball over and giving up easy baskets going the other way. Uh, and then what kind of shot do you get? And I think these guys are figuring that out. We were, you know, a month ago we were turning the ball over um, much higher than our assist. And that's, tar that's starting to trend the other way. And the shots that we were getting a month ago are much different than what we're getting now in the offense. So uh, that tells me our guys are listening, they're learning, and, and hopefully getting better. Sounds like there's a little bit of, there's a lot of anxiousness that you have about this year's team. Yeah, because it's opening week. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned it before, the NBA did it a, a couple, two or three weeks ago, and how exciting that is when basketball uh, gets started. And, and this week, college basketball gets started. So we're a part of that Friday night and a late tip. and. You know, our guys are anxious for that. We've had, I think this is practice number 27 today. So a lot of practices where you're going against blue gold and we're ready to go against other people. And uh, we're going to get uh, a good dose of that playing seven games in 14-day stretch. And we're excited to get the opener going. One final thing, isn't it amazing what they did to this, uh, to Paulie after all the flooding and everything else? Well, I've, I've said it so many times. The, the people here behind the scenes, have, uh, they deserve all that credit. Uh, they've worked so hard for the last two and a half months to get this ready in, in a really a two month period. Uh, just to, one, just to be able to practice and let alone conduct an entire game where we got people coming in and, and all, all those things, parking to concessions to just having everything up and running, bleachers that were had to be gutted on the floor and a, a brand new floor put in. It's it, You would never notice if you were here last year that there was anything wrong. And uh, that's a great credit to the people behind the scenes. How, how quickly, just having seen the scrimmage now, are you watching those freshmen kind of get it? Well, I, and it's going to be a process. We know that. And, and there will be games where you think they get it, and then, uh-oh. <laughs> you'll, you'll be saying, uh-oh. And, and that's, that's part of the youthfulness at, uh, at this level. So we know that. And I, I think what I've got to be and what our staff's got to be, we've got to be patient. We've got to really be patient this year because um, – it is an inexperienced team, and it's a very, very young bench. You know, if anything, our bench uh, is very young and inexperienced. So we've got a, the development of that. And that doesn't mean development that all of a sudden they got to be. Last year's team, we had about, even though it was young and experienced, uh, if you look at Tony and Zach and Bryce in particular, they, they got us 20 to 22 points, a lot of assists, pretty good rebounds, you know, all over the board. Uh, and I think that's why, you know, when we brought our bench in, we got a little quicker, faster, maybe more efficient at times. That may not be the case this year with this bench. This bench and developing this bench, it's how we defend, how we rebound. Uh, can we rest guys and still, still stay at the level that we need to stay? And that may not be point production. It may every night. There will be nights I think that can happen. But I think our bench, they're, they're learning their roles and they're getting better at it. And, um, I, I really like what I see there, but I do think there'll be nights where, you know, we'll say, uh oh, you know, just because of the youthfulness, and we've got to be able to handle that and make adjustments and still try to win when, when those nights do occur. Have you had a team before like this where you head into the season with so many, relying on so many unknown commodities? Oh, I'm sure I have. I've been in it long enough. <laughs> I'm sure I've had, I'd have to reflect back, but, um, you know, I've been very fortunate, very blessed uh, to be able to start my 24th year. Uh, I've, had in, I've had very inexperienced teams. I've had very experienced teams um, with five different jobs. I've had five brand-new situations uh, like last year. So 
Uh, I'm sure I've had I've had some very very young teams, and you know, but that that's all part of it, you know. And, and that's not. Please don't misquote me. It's not using youth and inexperience as any kind of excuse. It's who we are, and we got to build from that. And that's going to be that'll be the whole. I think the way this season goes is how patient can coaches be. We're going to have to live through some mistakes with youthfulness. Uh, but I want to see the enthusiasm. I want to see the, the aggressive play. That's what I want to see out of a lot of these young guys. Is it harder to be patient with the schedule you guys have in the next month and a half? Or yeah, you know, it's easy for me to stand here and say, <laughs> you know, be patient. I mean, we haven't played a game. We've just had 27 practices. So that's, uh, that's easy. It, it gets a little bit more difficult when all of a sudden you get hit with an 8-0 run. Um, you know, and maybe you have to go back to starters quicker or, you know, how long can you go with your bench and, you know, all those type of things. Uh, the game, the, the game flow can determine how patient you're going to get. And, uh, but you're right, we're, hitting, we're getting hit with, um, you know, not just really good opponents early, but, you know, some tough game times, you know, a 9 o'clock Friday start and turn around, got to play Sunday at 7. Uh, you know, that's difficult. And then you got a Thursday, Sunday uh, turnaround, both night games as well. And then you got to go to the Bahamas. And that, that's not, not only is the competition stuff, tough in the Bahamas, but that's long travel. So there's a lot of things you throw in, uh, but the guys have got to stay really focused on making sure each 40 minutes we keep getting better. And from the exhibition game to the scrimmage, that happened. Now, whether we'll be able to just continue that trend, we got to wait and see. But I, I liked what's happened the last couple of weeks. Even with the tougher schedule, do you have to put a special emphasis on getting GG, uh, Juana, Noah minutes early to accelerate their development? A absolutely. Um, you know, Noah and Juana being here last year, but not really being in a consistent rotation. Uh, and then GG and Tom, uh, two freshmen off the bench, uh, those guys have got to get some minutes and, and important minutes uh, to build confidence, to learn what they can do. And, and we've tried to do that in the exhibition season, we've tried doing that um, with our scrimmage. And I really liked it. You know, we played extra minutes in the scrimmage, so uh, they were able to play. Uh, when we went to the extra period, they played almost all those minutes. So uh, that's that's what ends up being good with the scrimmage versus uh, an exhibition game. So uh, we were able to do that in the scrimmage that I think really helped them. And now we've got three days. We know there's going to be some anxiety um, with young guys. That's what's good. If there's no anxiousness, there's not enough care. And I know these guys care. So. We'll be able to play through that, and as they start to get a little bit more rhythm, I think you'll see, you know, what they can do for this team at a higher level. What did you see in scrimmage that encouraged you the most? Well, our ball moved extremely well. Um, the tempo of the game was was great. Uh, I thought we were able to do the things we wanted to do in transition that uh, we had hoped. Our bigs ran the floor. Um, we got a lot of good things out of an awful lot of players, so we built some confidence there. I thought defensively it was something that we had really worked on from the exhibition game, and I thought exhibition game to scrimmage, our defense um, really went up a notch, and, and I think that was the best thing that we saw. Our, our board play, you know, we got hammered pretty good on the offensive backboard in the exhibition game, and that really got turned around uh, in the scrimmage, and that enabled us to run. Uh, those defensive stops enabled us to get runs in the game that I think hurt the opponent. So I really liked what I saw on both sides of the ball, to be honest with you. We, we took care of it. We valued it. We got great shots. We made shots. Uh, and then on the defensive end, I thought we, we made it hard on the opponent to get the things that they wanted to get. Since the first half of the exhibition game, what have you seen from Kavan that's kind of developed? Well, he's just getting more comfortable, and he's getting more and more healthy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he unfortunately, uh, with the hip, missed a couple weeks, and he missed some time this summer, too. So. I think he's feeling a lot better about himself because he's seen himself uh, getting closer to 100%. And that's always big for a player like that, that when you're playing at 70 versus playing at 100, uh, you just feel like you can do more. And he's just been terrific. He, he's going to be a, a great mismatch nightmare, I, I think, because he's so versatile inside and out. He's a great rebounder. He's a great teammate. He shares the ball. He makes the right plays. And, um, so that, he's going to be a, a huge key for us, and right now he's playing pretty well. What did you see in him the first time you went and saw him when he was still in high school? About a nine foot nine wingspan. <laughs> um, you know, he's just he's so long. He's mm -hmm. Kyle. You know, he, and I'm not saying he's he's Kyle's player. Kyle's a, got a point guard mentality. Mm -hmm. Kevon does not, but very similar um, in their styles, and that they're very good rebounders because of their length. Seven three, seven foot four wingspan. Uh, he's about 6'9", maybe almost 6'10". Uh, he handles the ball like Kyle does. 
So you don't, you don't see that all the time. So he's really good in the open floor, and he's really learning at the half court. I think when you go from high school to college, um, transition, uh, it's not similar. You know, you got a longer floor, greater athletes, but that's what you're used to. The half court defense, the half court offense, that takes a little bit longer, and he's really starting to get comfortable in that role at both ends. Speaking of Kyle, Kyle and Bryce are different types of point guards. Yeah. Does that change the offense? Is it, can you run the same things? Is it going to alter anything? No, I, you know, Bryce last year did a really good job of pushing it, and we've seen that here now in our first two games. That's continued, and that's what we want. And now Isaac, I think, as we flow back and forth from Bryce to Isaac, uh, and then on occasion when it's a defensive rebound by Kevon, he's got the freedom to go. So you don't really have a point guard. You just, you're going. And, but obviously the point guard duties are going to be shared between Bryce and, and Isaac. Um, we want to, and, and Isaac's the one that's just getting familiar with it. So uh, as he learns, I think it'll get quicker too. But Bryce really does a good job of getting the ball. He, he's, he's fast, he's quick, he understands getting the ball down the floor, and that's happening. So I don't see that changing any. Um, but obviously one's a 6'9 point guard and another one's 6'3. You know, we could... There's a lot of other things we did with Kyle, with posting him and isolating him and doing those things. Uh, with Bryce, we'll do different things. You know, we'll run him off screens. We'll use more pick and rolls, uh, things like that to free him up offensively to not just shoot it, but facilitate and create off the bounce. After losing such a versatile piece like Kyle, how much is how important is it that Kavan kind of steps into that and kind of unlocks the versatility of this whole team? Well, where he gives us versatility is, and he's a guard, so we're either in a four-guard lineup with him in, or when we do sub, it gives us a little bit of versatility, and that's what we're having fun with as coaches right now, trying to figure that out. Our versatility last year was the backcourt. Mm. We would all of a sudden have Kyle in at the one, and then four minutes in, he's a, he's a four-man. Mm. Uh, this year, it's different. Now, this year, we can have versatility with the front court. Uh, you've got, you can rotate Tony and Tom, you can take both of them out and have Gigi, Juana, and Kavan and go very athletic, very long. You know, so there's a lot of combinations that we have to play with up front, and Kavan has a lot to do with that because his ability to play multiple positions in the backcourt. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Coach. You've got Norman.